Is it true that um, Kai Havertz has a total agreement with Chelsea Football Club? True. True. <laughs> <laughs> I like this game. <laughs> I heard um, that Klopp uh, wants him. You know, um, he didn't get Werner. Now he wants Thiago. So, Christian, is it true that Thiago will be a Liverpool um, player at the end of the transfer window? So, I would say um, true. Is it true? that he'll be going to Manchester City? I think, um, but I don't know it yet because they're really, really keeping this secret. But I think this will be the next step for, for Messi. So it's uh, it's important to know for your United fans, uh, he still like wants to go to United. And uh, you know, it's just a question of money. Uh, I could, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Hello listeners and welcome back to yet again another episode of the Beautiful Game podcast. As ever, I'm your host Budge, joined by my faithful two co-conspirators Dot and Dej. Gents, how, how are we doing? Very well. Good. How about you Dej? I'm doing very, very well. Lovely day. So let's get it started, bro. A hundred percent. So we are, of course, also joined uh, by uh, a, a very special guest. We're in well-esteemed company. Um, our special guest is uh, Chief Reporter uh, and Head of Football for the uh, Build Group. Uh, he's uh, responsible for reporting on FC Bayern and the German national team. Um, if you're talking about people who have been performing at the top level for, for decades and decades, uh, you need to look no further to this gentleman. He's been reporting on FC Bayern since 2000 and has accompanied the, uh, the German national team to all tournaments since the 2004 European Championships. We've, of course, seen him get up close and personal with some of the biggest names, not only in German football, but also European football as a whole. He's a man of very few words, and often he's, he's only ever going to tell you if it's true or not true. <laughs> and so without further ado, we welcome Christian Falk to the platform. Welcome, Christian. Welcome, 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 welcome Christian. Thank you for the warm welcome. It's a pleasure, Thank you very Christian. much for your time, Christian. We appreciate you. We know you're, you're busy at the moment. You know, you've got calls coming in left, right, and centre. Mm. So we're not going to take too much time. We're going we're to get straight into it. Uh, Dot, uh, kick us off. Yeah, so Christian, is a similar question um, to what I asked Fabrizio Romano. How have you become this transfer guru, you know, putting out news, saying whether it's true or false? How has that brand, you know, come of age? You know, I think I'm doing the job uh, since 20 years and I think uh, the best uh, news, always the transfer news because every fan is looking at it, uh, who is coming, who is going and uh, I love this. And uh, now in the new modern times, you know, you can do it very, very quick on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, years ago, which feels like ages, you had it uh, to wait one day and then I was working uh, and then was writing and then Perhaps in the evening I could get a newspaper from the next day and you see, oh, how does it look like? But now the business is a little bit faster. So um, we do it everywhere. Um, we write then the articles uh, about the news we did on Twitter. So um, something changed, but it's good fun. And there's so many news that um, sometimes you already mentioned it. Uh, perhaps it's better to make uh, just one word or perhaps two. So you're very quick. <laughs> no, that's a great insight, Christian. Um, yeah, I'm going to kick things off. Um, Thiago Alcantara. <laughs> I was actually speaking to a Liverpool journalist, <laughs> you know, this morning, and I said, what's the insight into Thiago's deal? What's happening? And he said, to be honest, the club are being, you know, they're playing like poker, but the man to ask is Christian Falk. <laughs> so what's happening? So this guy was true. <laughs> <laughs> so um but um indeed um you know um Thiago wasn't uh, talking a lot about that in Germany as well but um you know like it is if you are you three guys you're talking some things you wouldn't do on the show and so it is in the dressing room and we heard really really early uh, from the dressing room that he he want to leave he said uh, to some guys I don't mention now um, do, you, do you want my house? You know, it's new, it's big, uh, it's great. And so we said, okay, there's something happening. And um, we heard uh, that it is Liverpool. And um, his problem is uh, that he has to bring the fee because Bayern Munich uh, wouldn't like to leave him because uh, I don't know uh, if you know it, and that uh, 
he was quite, <laughs> it was really everything done. He should, just had to sign his contract. Uh, first of all, Bayern Munich said, you can stay for three years. He said, no, I want to stay four years. And Bayern Munich said, oh, we give you three years plus one if you play 30 games. And it was going on and going on. At the end, <laughs> Bayern Munich was saying, hey, if you get four years, just sign. And then he said, oh, I have to ask my wife again. <laughs> <laughs> After that, he was coming back and said, no, uh, you can think I'm crazy, but I won't sign and I will leave. And the club accept. And um, he didn't tell anybody uh, official where he is going to, but he said goodbye now at the party with the players uh, on Sunday. He said it again when they were coming back to Munich on Monday and uh, he was walking around in the stadium, nearly crying. It was his way of saying goodbye. And um, we know from our club, because um, like Liverpool, there are no official things who they say about uh, what's going on, but they're waiting daily of the offer from Liverpool and they're really excited uh, which numbers are in, because this is an important point. So, are Liverpool in for Thiago? Yeah, Liverpool, um, I heard um, that Klopp uh, wants him. You know, um, he didn't get Werner. Now he wants Thiago. I think he's a puzzle for his system, which is very, very good. You know, Thiago, when he was going to Munich, he was already technical perfect. Now he's also good in defense. So, I think this is a key player Liverpool could need. But uh, I don't know if the club gives Klopp the money to pay Thiago because we know that Bayern Munich expecting uh, 30 million euros for the player and uh, I'm not sure if Liverpool will bring it uh, immediately. Yeah, another thing I wanted to ask is um, are Bayern, you know, do they know that Thiago is definitely going to leave or is there any chance of him signing a new contract? No, I don't think he's signing a new contract because um, from the bosses, nobody asks him again because if you say no, it's no. And um, the other thing is uh, the, second, the second half of, the, of this year from the season of Bayern Munich after the Corona break, Thiago was injured. And um, then Kimmich uh, and Goretzka, German young national players, are playing together on this position together with Müller and it worked very well. So they see um, there's a future with young players and they can change something for the future. I think they would have been very, very happy if Thiago would have stayed, but uh, they saw how the future can look without Thiago and it worked very well. And, you know, at Bayern Munich, it's always um, a big thing to keep German national players in this club. This is the soul of this club. And uh, of course, we need fantastic players like Lewandowski, uh, or Kuman, who are coming from foreign countries. But um, I think this is the point why Bayern Munich is always very good that they have these people to hold the club together. So I think this is sometimes perhaps at, at City a problem where you don't know who will play next year and uh, if there's an identification with the club. And that's why I think um, they're not happy that Thiago are leaving, but uh, nobody's crying. So Christian... Is it true that Thiago will be a Liverpool um, player at the end of the transfer window? So I would say um, true with the but. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't, I don't give Liverpool the money and uh, <laughs> they have to spend it. So, um, you know, he has just one year contract left. 30 millions uh, are in this times a big amount of money. And um, he's now at an age where he's not signing so many contracts after that, so you won't earn any money if you sell him again. So this is a point which has to be cleared, but um, I think it will happen. And both clubs are in talks at the moment. Um, the last, uh, last information I had, uh, I can't say now <laughs> when, but it's uh, not so long ago, uh, was that Bayern Munich is still waiting for the offer. So. They wait. Mm. Christian, staying on the topic of uh, Bayern Munich, and funny enough, a player that uh, formerly uh, played for Liverpool in uh, Philip Coutinho. Now, they 
as far as we're aware, have uh, decided not to um, exercise their the option to buy Philip Coutinho. And I guess I really wanted to understand the, the reasons behind that, because he's, he's not had a bad season uh, over in Germany. Um, you know, he, he, I guess, fits the profile of, of, a, of a player that can uh, continue to do well. He's at a, a good age. Um, and of course, with sort of Bayern now, um, not necessarily restructuring, but they're, they're going into a, a new phase um, in terms of the, the, their squad, um, why they wouldn't decide to um, sign Coutinho? The, the answer needed just two words, uh, Thomas Müller. So, you know, this season you saw again how important it is uh, such a player you have, uh, which was a talent from your own club. Uh, he's really the boss in the dressing room. He's the boss on the pitch. And uh, I know it's looking sometimes a little bit funny how he's playing because he's not a Messi and he's not a Thiago, but uh, his technique is so efficient. You know, he, mm -hmm. if you get the ball mm -hmm. in front of a goal, you can be sure he will do it. And... Um, there was, um, at the beginning of the season, it wasn't Hansi Flick, which was the manager of, of Bayern Munich, it was Niko Kovac. At this time, it seemed that something will happen, what every, every fan would say, please don't do it, that um, Thomas Müller would have leave this club. Mm -hmm. uh, in winter, he was uh, talking with the bosses, he said, hey, if the situation doesn't change, I go away um, last year. And... The situation changed, you know, Flick was coming and said, oh, no, he's my man. He knew Thomas Müller from the World Cup. That was uh, Flick, the assistant coach when we were world champion. And, you know, in the middle, if, if Thomas Müller is playing, there is not much space for Coutinho. Um, they brought mm -hmm. him also on the wing, for sure. But this is not his, his main position. It works, but it's mm -hmm. not uh, this what they wanted to do because... Um, for this reason, they bought another player. It's Leroy Zanier. You know him very well in England. Mm. And uh, to be true, um, if it would have worked already last year and he didn't, Leroy Zanier didn't get injured, uh, Coutinho would have never been signed. So they ah. didn't, they didn't uh, go for Coutinho because they wanted Coutinho. They went for Coutinho because they didn't get Leroy Zanier. So it was really, ah. very clear that they won't uh, buy him. Because the amount of money which was in his contract, I think it was 120 million euros, uh, I remember, to sign him this year. Now it's not the same price anymore because of Corona also. But um, they knew that they will sign Leroy Zane next year. And they have Leroy Zane and they're happy with Leroy Zane and he will play now on the wing. In the middle there is Thomas Müller playing. <laughs> Not much space for such an expensive player. Yeah, to continue, yeah. you know. No, that's a great way to you know move into my next question. Um, Lionel Messi. There's reports saying that his 20-year marriage to Barcelona <laughs> is ending in divorce. That he apparently <laughs> sent a fax saying that he wants to leave the club. Is it true that he'll be going to Manchester City? I think. Um, but I don't know it yet because they're really, really keeping this secret. But I think this will be the next step for, for Messi. Um, even they wow. don't say anything about it. Um, you know, I know for sure Bayern Munich won't buy him. Um, my dear colleague Fabrizio says <laughs> he's not going to Juventus Turin either. Mm. So there are not so many clubs left where um, first they can pay the price. And we talk about his salary. And other, Messi won't leave this club um, to build a new team like Chelsea, which can win in three or four years the Champions League. Uh, he will go to a team where he can win it next year also. So I think Pep Guardiola and him, there's a special connection. It wasn't always so good like everybody thought, but uh, they have the same philosophy. Um, Messi sees that at City, he can win the Champions League. Um, Pep will build the team around him. So I think this is what happened next. Wow. Christian, I also wanted to ask you, going back to Bayern, um, there's two players that come to mind in particular, um, that there's been some, uh, you know, rumors papers about them potentially not extending their stay at, at the club. And that is the current centre-back partnership of both David Alaba and, and, and Jerome Boateng. Um, 
Now, of course, both of those guys have been integral to the success of, of Bayern over the years. And could we finally see both of those uh, after, after such a, uh, a, a illustrious ca uh, careers at the club? Or, or will the club um, offer them new, new deals? So uh, it's easier to answer in the case of Jerome, um, because I talked to him uh, last days and uh, he will stay. He wants to stay. There is uh, the question if he gets a new contract. There is uh, no talks at the moment uh, over 2021 20, and the season after. Then he's 32. So we will have to see what happened then. But next year we will see him at Bayern Munich because he likes the club. He likes the coach. Hansi Flick and him are doing very, very well. And uh, I didn't hear that there's any other offer at the moment. So he will stay. Uh, at the moment he's on holiday, so he can relax and uh, he's a little bit injured. So perhaps he's not uh, the first uh, day in the training, but five, six days after Bayern Munich is starting again, he will be there and he's important. We saw it on, in the Champions League. Uh, there are not so many players who have won the, how are you say in English, treble? Yeah. Like, yeah. Said, yeah. Treble. <laughs> the treble. <laughs> <laughs> so he's one of them. And um, you saw that he can be really important for this team. David Alaba is a little bit complicated the situation, you know. Um, I think now he would like to stay at the beginning of uh, neg the negotiations. I don't know if you know that he, he changed his agent. Yep. He has now, yeah, the agent Pini Sahavi, uh, which made the Neymar deal. <laughs> uh, he promised him to bring him to the club he wants to. Uh, the clubs he wants are Real Madrid and FC Barcelona. So it's not the best time then to go to these clubs because they won't pay the price. Barcelona has really big problems now. Uh, don't need a defensive player <laughs> to the first choice. Real Madrid, uh, I heard, is not uh, willing to, to pay so many millions at the moment either. So the only step which would be possible, no, there are two. Um, one is the Premier League, of course, and the other is Paris Saint-Germain. Uh, after the final, I don't think he's going to Paris Saint-Germain. <laughs> <laughs> also, before, also before, it was not his first target. And there's a little interest uh, from the Premier League, for sure. Um, Arsenal and Chelsea? He, he wants to win the Champions League, so uh, I don't think... <laughs> <laughs> the next step for him, but... Um, City was also uh, talking with the agent, or better to say, the agent was talking with City. <laughs> so trying to make a swap deal with Leroy Sané, that wasn't possible. Uh, I think Alaba um, really would like, really would want to like to stay. But it's a big question about the salary. And uh, I heard the agent said that he wants over 20 million euros and uh, not 21 and not 22, uh, really over 20 million euros. Wow. So Bayern Munich won't pay this price. And uh, they were also talking in Lissabon. Uh, they were talking before in Munich. Uh, in Munich, uh, the parties uh, were getting very loud. So <laughs> now the next, next meeting was a little bit more quiet and more friendly. So I think both sides now try to find a solution. Uh, otherwise, um, there's just uh, for Bayern Munich the bad reason that there's still one contract year contract left. And uh, in one year, David Alaba can sign every club in the world he would like to go, Real, Barca, and any mm -hmm. Premier League club because then he's free and uh, he's young and he's experienced and he also won the treble twice. Mm -hmm. So this would be a very dangerous situation for Bayern Munich. And I think it wouldn't be also a good situation for David also because it's never good to have uh, a, a, not a clear future in this age. You know, there's uh, Lucas Hernandez sitting on the bench behind him for the same position. Bayern Munich paid uh, 80 million euros, which are peanuts in the Premier League. But, <laughs> 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 but the second uh, most expensive player it was just the half of the price in, in the Bundesliga. So it wouldn't be good for both sides, I think. Mm. Yeah, so staying in Germany, Christian, I want to talk about Jaden Sancho. We had Fabrizio Romano on the platform a few weeks ago and it was approaching, here we go. <laughs> but now it seems like things have stalled. So what's the update? What's the latest news on Jaden Sancho to Manchester United? 
So it's it's important to know for your United fans, uh, he still like wants to go to United, and uh, I think it's just a question when. You know, um, uh, we talked already. Uh, I was uh, in a Zoom call with Fabrizio a week ago, and we were also talking about this topic. And um, you know, it's just a question of money. If they pay 120 million euros, I think it's a crazy amount of money in these times, but. <laughs> I know that that Ed, Ed would get, get really pressure from the fans, so <laughs> perhaps he has to pay it. But um, I think many people didn't know, we shown this uh, also for a long time, that uh, Sancho signed a contract uh, secretly, which is uh, one year more. So for Dortmund, there is no need to, to sell him now. Uh, he, they get the price next year also. So um, they are happy because they want to be German champion. Bayern Munich was it eight times in a row. So they try everything to, to win the championship in Germany. And I think it's easier with Sancho than without. And um, if United buys him next year, it's okay for Dortmund. So time is running for Ed. So. <laughs> Christian, do you see Jaden like, agitating for a move? Do you see a situation where he may put in a transfer request? You, might, you mean he's striking or...? Yeah, do you, do you see a situation where you might say, you know what, you might approach Michael Zork or the manager at the club and say, I want to leave, I want to go to Manchester United? No, there, there, I think um, Dortmund knows there's a, a, quite a promise. If a club bring the price, pay the 100 million euros, he's allowed to leave. But um, he agreed already to United, so there are not so many clubs at the moment in. Of course, it's always a risk to wait one year more. Because you know what is happening with City, uh, I knew that um, Bayern Munich wanted also to get Sancho when he was going to Dortmund. Sancho said no, but um, they talked to Pep Guardiola and asking about him. Pep Guardiola said, "Oh, he's a little bit difficult character and so on." Uh, I think Pep now knows <laughs> that <laughs> it was not a good decision to, to, to let him go. But uh, you know, if if Imagine if Manchester City is playing with Messi and De Bruyne, um, a young English player, there's a big chance to play there too. Perhaps he do it. Uh, I think it's not so good to say yes to United and <laughs> then sign for City, but um, you never know in this business. And Christian, of course, we know Dortmund to be a, a very progressive club that are always sort of thinking a few years uh, uh, in, into the future. So undoubtedly, if they're considering um, the sale of Jadon Sancho, they will have had a few other targets in mind to replace him. Uh, can you shed any light into who they could potentially be looking at as, as, as a potential replacement for Jadon Sancho? I could, but I can't. <laughs> 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 so indeed, um, of course, uh, Michael Zorg is talking with a few agents and clubs uh, what will be possible if they have the money and don't have Sancho anymore. But uh, what you hear also from these talks that it's not very consequent at the moment. So you see they're feeling fine with Sancho and uh, also United fans knows uh, that they have one player already, which is young and who could be the next Sancho. We're talking about Bellingham. So we're, we're looking at him and see what he's doing. I don't think he can be so fast, such a, good player like Sancho mm -hmm. is, but Sancho had the time already, you know, but um, Dortmund has so many, so many good players at the moment, which yeah. are, you know, um, Julian Brandt is sitting at the bench at the moment. He's a brilliant player. Yeah, so yeah. they have the choice. They have the time. They don't need the money. Perfect situation for Dortmund. Yeah, so Christian, another player I want to mention is Kingsley Coleman, and he gave Cora a, a terrible time at right back. People are saying that their futures are interlinked, Sancho and Coleman. So if Man United don't get Sancho, is Coleman a viable option as a replacement? Not true. There's no chance. <laughs> <laughs> no chance. Um, you know, um, Bayern Munich has a concept of uh, the three players on the wing because Bayern Munich know from the last season and the time with Robin and Ribéry, uh, if you have such fast players, um, they can get very fast uh, and quick injured. 
So they know they need three of them. Uh, Flick wants a fourth player either. So they won't say, Coman, I know there were rumors and uh, of course United is trying to talk and uh, see what is possible. But I think it's also a little bit part of a poker with Dortmund to see how we can buy another one. But uh, what I need for, what, what I know for sure is then um, a few days before um, Bayern Munich uh, paid the price for Leroy Sané, uh, Chiki Beckestein uh, was trying to make a swap deal um, with um, Sané and Koman. I showed uh, the Bayern Munich, uh, oh, this would be perfect because here and now I sent an email, showed every possibilities, uh, but Bayern Munich never thought a second about this and said no. So why shouldn't they sell him uh, to City and give him to United. Is it true that um, Kai Havertz has a total agreement with Chelsea Football Club? True, true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like this game. <laughs> How far so down the line is this deal? So we're still waiting hour per hour uh, when the news are coming. Uh, we know that uh, from Leverkusen that um, they thought it could be done Till Friday, we're not sure if they will make it. Um, I think they're very close the parties, and we're talking about the clubs uh, because of the price. And uh, you know, it's a question of ads on. Um, 80 million euros should be paid directly, and then 10 and 10. So, but uh, the question is uh, when, in which case, Leverkusen would get this money. Uh, I heard in the first uh, negotiations, Chelsea said uh, one part is for winning the Champions League. Leverkusen isn't uh, so keen on this uh, <laughs> because, you know, you can't win it every year. So um, I think this now are details, but uh, I think um, it will happen soon. And, and, you know, on Monday, we need Kai Howard and our German national team. Perhaps it would be good to do the deal before. Christian, I wanted to ask you about someone who, who isn't necessarily um, in all of the newspapers and, and there's not really much talk about. Um, he, he's had certainly a fall from grace from the, the lofty heights that he um, established early on in his career. And one of my favourite players, actually, in, in recent years, which is um, yeah. <laughs> a, a certain Mario Goetze. Now, of course, he just recently, um, you know, uh, ended his contract uh, at Dortmund. And there's, you know, there's no talk about where he could potentially go next. So, so what next in the, in the, in the career of, of Mario Goetze? So perhaps we see in, uh, in France next year. So I think uh, there are talks uh, with Monaco at the moment. Uh, I think it would be a good solution for him. Uh, Niko Kovac uh, speaks perfect German, you know, he's, he's great, uh, but uh, born in Berlin. Um, he knows what uh, Götze can do if he's on top of his level. So um, it's a little bit difficult in the moment for him because he didn't show it uh, at Dortmund. It's not, not ever easy to return to a club. Um, so it's not the first league. Before he, he go to Bayern Munich, he had the chance to go to Liverpool. He said no. I think at the moment, um, Liverpool is not uh, interested. So, um, you know, on this high level, I think there's no club for, for Götze at the moment. But uh, Monaco is a club which always is possible to play in the Champions League in a good year. Uh, it's a lovely town. You buy the sea. Yeah. He has yeah. a pretty wife which loves to live. <laughs> places. I think that was also one of the reasons he won't, didn't want like to live at Liverpool. But I love Liverpool. I like the pubs. But I think <laughs> if you're Miss Goetze, perhaps you're not so keen on the pubs. So perhaps it's Monaco. Yeah, Christian, going back to um, Chelsea. I want to ask about their goalkeeping situation. Um, we spoke to Fabrizio. Onana was being linked. And now there's another goalkeeper, Lille's goalkeeper, Mike Magnon. He's being linked with the you know, position in between the sticks. Do you see that one happening? It could be. Um, because um, Chelsea thought a lot about the goalkeepers. There was also a moment where they thought about Manuel Neuer when we're in Bayern Munich and Neuer were uh, discussing about a new contract at uh, the beginning of the year. Um, but uh, it didn't happen. So uh, because Neuer signed a new contract, 
We are very happy about that. Um, I know that um, Atletico said no for Oblak. I think Chelsea would like to have him, but he's really expensive also. So, you know, on this level to get a really, really good goalkeeper, there are not so many solutions left. Another player I wanted to ask about is Hussein Awa, the Leon Dynamo. We've seen him in the Champions League putting some devastating performances. I know Juventus and Man City were being linked with him. Do you believe that he will leave Leon this summer? If there is a serious offer, I think that will happen uh, because Leon is Leon is not uh, so big at the moment that they can say no. But um, you know there were the same rumors about Bayern Munich, and I know for sure that this was not uh, the idea at the moment, and um, that's why I'm, there's so many rumors at the moment. You know, let's talk about City or if they get Messi. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's just um, every every club has a few targets at the moment, and it's uh, not the time to do it all at once. They have to do it step by step because the money of the fans in the stadium is not there. So let's wait and see. But uh, I don't think he's one of the first targets on the on the market for the big clubs. Christian, I wanted to um, also ask about uh, another defender who really, I think, announced himself on a big stage and, and really had a lot of potential suitors uh, paying attention to him with his performances in the Champions League. He's a, a, a young centre-back at uh, RB Leipzig, um, uh, Deo Upamecano. Now, uh, again, this is sort of all, all rumours, but he had apparently a, a, a release clause in his contract and, and um, that potentially may have expired this season, but then next year, maybe there's, there's an opportunity for him to, to leave uh, RB Leipzig for, for potential suitors. So could you just clarify that? And, and, and do you feel that he could, he could potentially leave this summer or next summer? I think he won't leave this summer because uh, if he would like to, to leave this summer, he had the chance to do it already. So I think it's a little bit like Timo Werner, you know, there was the same situation. He had a clause, he extended the contract and uh, had a, Clause again, uh, which was a little bit higher, and left one year after. So I think this is not the year Upamecano will leave. Uh, he can play next year Champions League with Leipzig. Uh, they have done very well, I think, um, and it's a big chance for a player like him to get more experience, and then he can do the next step. But at the moment, I think he will stay. But at the end, uh, I don't know if next year or the year after, but uh, I see him playing in the Premier League. He's definitely a Premier League player and he would like to go there. So, but perhaps by Munich, by <laughs> <laughs> And Julian Nagelsmann, he's been someone that's, you know, been dubbed to take over one of the Premier League clubs in the future. Is that anything you can shed light on? Uh, I didn't get the name now. Julian Nagelsmann. Is he not oh. saying it correctly? Is he not saying it correctly? <laughs> he didn't Maybe say it with, with the, the English accent. The, yeah, the English accent. <laughs> it's, uh, I say it's like Upamecano. I don't know if it's this year. You know, I don't think that so many transfers will happen this year. I think it's, it's a year where they do the big, big transfers mm. um, because there's now a big chance to get some players. But I think the players which are not so expensive at the moment they have to wait a year more because the big clubs are taking the money they have and put it on one big name and not so many so we have to see but uh, I didn't hear that it's uh, done or if I, we, I can't say here we go and I can't say true at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Another player I wanted to ask about is Leon Bailey the mysterious case of Leon Bailey he's someone He's changed his agency recent, recently. He's gone to Colossal Sports. And there's been rumours saying that he might be coming to the Premier League. Do you believe that's true? Uh, if you have a club who <laughs> will pay the price, then it's true. But um, Do you know the price or the, the ballpark figure that Bayern Leverkusen are looking for, for his services? To be true at the moment, I think he's getting cheaper and cheaper. So, um, you know, if you, if you don't play at Leverkusen, so... Um, how do you like, uh, how do you want to play in a Premier League club on the top? 
So I think um, if somebody is coming and pay, paying 30, 30, 25, I uh, don't know for sure, uh, you can talk. Uh, normally you have to pay more, but uh, he did a few things uh, which weren't very professional, making party and going to parties where uh, it's Corona. So difficult, difficulty. I think he, it's good for him um, to get a little bit calmed down, playing football, playing good football or just not sitting on the bench, <laughs> uh, <laughs> then, then you can do a good job also in Premier League. Christian, another thing I wanted to ask was the German managers. You seem to be producing elite level managers. We've got Jurgen Klopp, Julian Nagelsmann, Thomas Tuchel, Hans Flick. What's going on in Germany that's allowing <laughs> you to produce these top, top managers? Now, I think uh, we are really lucky at the moment, but uh, there is not one reason why there are so many at the moment. And because every, every manager of these uh, names is completely different, you know, and Tuchel, Pep, you know, um, they are really our friends. Uh, when Pep was in Germany, I don't know if you know the story, when they were meeting in a restaurant and they were talking and talking and then they were beginning to make tactics on the table with salt and pepper. And so they're really football nerds. So everybody knew that uh, he's a brilliant coach. Uh, but now he showed that he can also be a good coach with big stars. Uh, Bayern Munich nearly um, took him after Ancelotti, um, but uh, then Heinkes were coming back. So uh, they said, now if we have Heinkes, we know uh, he's the right man in the situation. So uh, Tuchel signed at Paris. So, but you saw already what was he doing in Dortmund and in Mainz, he will be good. Uh, Flick is a big surprise. I know him from the national team. We, everybody knew that he's very, very good. But uh, now he showed it also in the first row, uh, which wasn't uh, clear that he will do it. And, um, but now you see, um, we have a German expression. Uh, a colleague uh, from the BBC didn't know uh, the, the English um, word from I said it's a man catcher. I don't know. It, I think you don't have the pr uh, expression in, in English, but... Uh, what it means is that he, he can uh, catch people for him. So Jürgen okay. Klopp, Jürgen Klopp is the biggest one you ever yeah. saw. <laughs> but Jürgen Klopp does it uh, in another way, a uh, very um, enthusiastic way, how he catches people for him, for his way. Hansi Flick does it a little bit uh, quiet, in a quiet way. And so you see he's also completely different. Jürgen Klopp is completely different. Like Tuche. And then you have Nagelsmann. Uh, which is a very, very interesting character. He's so young and he's so uh, self-confident in this age. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, I'm really impressed. Um, I think um, he will do the next big step uh, soon. Uh, perhaps then, uh, you know, I don't know if you know that Real Madrid asked him already. Uh, okay. A little time ago. So you see what, <laughs> what uh, future he could have. So, but... Uh, I think um, it's good to have them now, but that's not one German manager school, which uh, <laughs> build him. It's um, just the moment and it's good to have him. And um, we don't have to talk about Rangnick, uh, who was nearly manager of Milan. So he's also very interesting. I'm not sure if he's perfect for clubs with tradition or better at a club where he can build everything new. But uh, when he has a job again, uh, look his way. Uh, it's really impressing what he's doing in the club and with the players. Yeah, so last one from me. Um, obviously, I'm a Liverpool fan. Jurgen Klopp is the best manager in the world right now. And his contract is set to expire in 2024. Do you see there becoming a circumstance where he renews? Or do you think he says, you know what, 2024, I'm taking my sabbatical. I'm back to the Black Forest and I'm going to recoup. <laughs> I heard that he has just signed again to, that you don't ask the question always to him. So, and also the club. So I think, uh, yeah, I think he, he needs a sabbatical, but this is what he thinks. But I uh, heard also from friends of him that when he's sitting at home for one month, uh, he has so much power that <laughs> he has to go out and do the job again. 
Um, I think um, we will see him at the next step at the bench of a German national team. And then we have to wait because Jogi Löw has this uh, job and he's doing normally very good. It's not at the last tournament, but I think it was well on his fault. So, uh, but I think when Jogi Löw retires, um, the first man who will get a call is Jürgen Klopp. And I think he's going on the telephone. So do you think he's going to fulfill his contract on to 2024? Or do you think he will leave before that? So you, we have to ask you, we live how long you want to work, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> you know but, but I think if, if Jürgen Klopp has, has a chance and, and, and you see, and we're very happy that, uh, that you see that uh, he loves his country and uh, that you see that German can be also funny. Uh, mm. Thank you, Jürgen, <laughs> for that. And um, I think it, a big dream of everybody who was a boy and watching football to be player or coach of the national team, you know, and there's nothing above it. He has won the Champions League, he has won German Championship, the English Prem Championship, so uh, doing Germany at the World Cup, hey, why not? Absolutely. Uh, been uh, Christian, pleasure. it's been an absolute <laughs> pleasure. <laughs> did, did, did we enjoy ourselves? This is true. Oh, true. 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 This is true. 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 <laughs> Very true. <laughs> I love this word. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much for coming on and, and, and taking the time out to, to speak with us, Christian. It's been an absolute pleasure. And of course, one that we know all of our listeners and, and viewers will also enjoy. So before we sign out, I just want to remind all of you, if you're not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, it's a beautiful game podcast where you can watch all of our interviews. You can also listen to all of our interviews via our audio partner in Spotify. If you're not yet following us on Twitter, it's at podcast underscore TVG and on Instagram at pod underscore TVG. We're going to call it a day until the next episode over and out. Peace.